up guys how you guys doing it's me rob from rgd entertainment and welcome dumb to another episode of never give up dumb today's subject is gonna be a good one because dumb today's episode dumb is about never give up ton being brave then that that has a pretty long list as well. Just like, mm, uh, just like uh, last week's episode. You ever give up on being happy? I believe. Um, being brave is just having the guts. Dumb to do. Should just do something. To not exactly just go for it, but. Dumb if you don't, dumb if you're not brave, then you basically have no guts. No guts, no glory. Or something of that matter. My glasses have a spot on them. Excuses like wayward hair. <laughs> I, used to, I might have to get a haircut before uh, my birthday, but I doubt that's going to happen. But, dumb, before we begin the episode... I would love for you guys to smash a like button. Like a comment down to examples on when you were brave or when you were afraid to do something um, and you didn't think you were able to do it. Then also, obviously, hit the subscribe button. So you guys never miss a video. Then, if you are watching this on, on your cell phone, have it be an iPhone or Galaxy or a Google, whatever the hell, make sure your YouTube notifications are on in your phone settings and on the then on the, the actual YouTube. To, um, app because um, even though you have even though you hit the notification bell if you're somewhere then you see the notification of my show show up on your phone that means yours that means your phone settings are on but if it's over three, then you don't see it. You might want to examine your phone settings, then see if the notifications for YouTube um have been activated. So without further ado, let's get into a discussion on never give up on being brave. Dumb being. Mm. I am even though. I am brave how to do a lot of things, um, such as this show. I'm, I'm a little brave for doing this show, like giving you guys advice like every week. Because a few years ago, if I had the opportunity to speak with my younger self. And if, and if I said dumb out of myself when I was like in high school, when I said I dole out advice every week, done never giving up on basically every single subject on this big blue marble that we known as that we that we always have had the name Earth. That was a little weird. I uh, tried to be a little scientific, but it didn't work out. But, um, dumb, anyway, if I said uh, to my high school self that I'd be giving advice every single Sunday on YouTube in a show like this, 
uh, giving advice on, like, to every subject on this big blue marble, also known as Earth. He would have said, you are out of your goddamn mind. <laughs> like, literally, um, my high school self would have literally said, hey, that bend? Oh, shoot, I think it almost did. Never mind. Don't don't mess with your glasses, boys and girls. Poor men and women. But yeah, my younger self would have literally said I was out of my skull. I I had completely lost it. Like I was like I I was more out of my mind than like Jeffrey Dahmer, Lorena Bobbitt, uh, Jack Nicholson in The Shining. Um, most of everyone, uh, from the movie, one flew over the cuckoo's nest, <laughs> all, like, balled up into just a big ball of, like, psycho nutso -ness that my high school self would be, like, ball- you do not give advice on a weekly basis. But now that I do, I actually really um, enjoy it because I've gone through a lot of issues uh, during my life. Then I, then I'm gonna guess everyone who watches these episodes of the show would agree. Like, um, everyone deals with uh, 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 no with stress anxiety of like some level I wouldn't say then some might say like the insanely rich in like LA uh, don't go through stressful things I'm not saying a dumb blonde in Beverly Hills doesn't go through anything or she has anything in her head but that's for a different episode <laughs> uh, but yeah, it like, doesn't matter if you're rich or toward Lily, a bum on the street. Y you go through so many things during life. Hey, you go through things when you were first born. Hello? I had a surgery when I was 30 days old. Um, I almost. I almost didn't make it. Um, I almost died after a month uh, from being born. But that's also going to... I'm going to go into a more detail some of that um, in a different episode. Um, I don't know what episode. Um, I should discuss um, my, th my 30 day old surgery. Then Tomo's dying. But um, it, if you guys have any ideas, please let me know down below. Thank you. But, um, anywho. Mm. Being brave. Oh, okay. Um, if someone gets... Let's say you get fired. You get fired from your job of like nine years. You were almost at the same job for a decade. And then one day they say, uh, due to budget cuts, or your skills in the job have been dwindling down lately, we're going to unfortunately have to let you go. Then you're like, Yo, what the f- Yo, what the f- What are you saying? <laughs> But then, dumb uh, like, get out there, like, dumb uh, I, I do want to say it does take a certain level of bravery. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get yourself off the ground, then begin throwing your resume out there, then looking for a new job, like, hey, looking for a job. It's not easy. Then they can be like extremely stressful. Are these on right? I'm sorry. The last few episodes of this show, I've been 
stressed out about my glasses because these are brand new. But uh, yeah, like looking for a job, I'd say that has a certain amount of bravery in there because um, you have to go through, basically go through the ringer. Like, uh, you might get shot down, like, a dozen times. And half a dozen or a dozen interviews. Until you basically, like, Green Arrow, hit the mark with the with your arrow. But, yeah, like, um... You also have to be brave of, like, getting the, to... A new skill like uh like I did with graphic design uh three years ago. Um I didn't think I was gonna dumb even get the hang of it. But um, I just had to be brave, buckle down, then just listen out of what they were saying, um everything they said about Adobe Illustrator, InDesign, Photoshop I did a little bit of Dex D, but that kind of faltered. That that kind of faltered. Though we didn't. Though we only did like one thing related to uh, Dom X D, and then we just got the hell rid of it. Mm. But uh, I might teach myself um, how to use um, X D again. But Dom, yeah. I was afraid I wasn't going to get the handle of using thin design, Illustrator, or Photoshop. Then, now that you see um, every thumbnail that I have used uh, for this episode, uh, for the show, I, 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 I'm skilled in Photoshop, guys, because some of these thumbnails were actually really hard them to do mm. especially finding the images then uh, um, having them be the right size then also um, having them be the right size so I'd be able to use them as thumbnails because for some reason if a photo has a large um, size amount that won't be able to be your thumbnail so mm. yeah i had to be brave then learning graphic design and look what happened three years later mm. excuse me i am now a junior graphic artist um at an art center where i helped them with deadlines clients also i do a little um social media social media things uh for them as well than their clients which is known as synchronicity i didn't know that either though but i had to be brave then in you know, learning all this because it's a new skill that i had no idea what that what the hell I was uh, getting myself into. I thought it was going to just fall flat on my ass. Then. And just give up. But tiny never gave up. Then. Now I'm a junior graphic artist. With a job at an art center. So. So. I hate. Don't roast me for doing this. But in the words of London. From the Sweet Life. Yay me! <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I just had to do that. I couldn't resist. I'm so sorry. Um, if anyone knows that Brenda Song has an Instagram, please, please send her that like small little instance. That would make that that would make my day if like. Any W viewers have an Instagram, send this over to Brenda Song. That just, like me going, yay me. That would make my week, actually, guys. Like on my day, my week, my month, and my year. I think I just referenced the theme song to Friends. 
I don't know. But get into something else. Nah! I have mentioned him in my reaction videos, and I've also reacted at him once or twice or three times. Now I gotta look back. But our friend, our new friend on here, he lives on my desk, but he has a great job. He is a shrink, but there is nothing wrong with going to therapy and to my mean to our mini little friend here dr fraser crane to our friend fraser crane um in his spin-off show fraser he he had um he had to have the guts um and the bravery then or bravery whatever you want to say i'm not an english don the hell am I an English lit major? Come on. But like um he had to be brave um in leaving Boston where his young son lived. Um his son Frederick Tor Freddy um lived in Boston with his ex wife Lily. And if you're wondering why I said her name like that Watch the show. You'll figure it out. <laughs> um, either watch this show where she makes more than one. Uh, where she's in like a slew of episodes, or watch the, uh, the show that both her and Fraser were in. I have it right here, boys and girls. It is. This one right here. He wasn't in the debut season, but... Oh. Oopsie. <laughs> I accidentally gave you guys a little hand gesture. Oops. And certainly not a friendly one, so I am so sorry about that. But uh, this sh this show right here... Um, sorry, just I um, hit the top of Nicholas's head. But this show... But I got... Cheers. This is where Frazier made his debut. Um, I think I have his... Um, his... Um, his debut season on DVD, actually. I think it was, uh, season three, guys. Bingo! Here we go! Dumb at the bar where everybody knows you're... In oh, what the hell. It seems there's a little sticker. I'm on it. Twelve ninety nine. Mm. Uh, um, I don't know whether that's right or that's. Where the hell did someone buy this? Wait, I think my mother bought me this. Uh, yeah. Use me, and if you look in between, if you look here. Right in between Barfly Norm and the annoying and and slightly inept mailman, I got Cliff. You'll see a familiar face with a little more hair on his head. Sorry, but there he is. Right there, right where my finger's on. There it is, Dr. Fraser Crane. I mean, he debuted in season three of this show right here. Uh, the whole thing. Yeah, this got a little damaged. But he debuted in the third season of Cheers. Then he was on the show for the rest of the show's run. I just shoved that in the wrong spot. I'm a moron. So I have to get a better DVD filing system. Um, if I had a bigger room, I would do that, but I don't. But, uh, um, yeah. He debuted then season three, then Dan was on the show all the way to the very last episode of season 11, before the show went off the air, Dom after Dom at eleven year run, and during the show, I, um, he did meet 
Dr. Lilith Sternen, a mother witch. He fell in love with her. Um, they got married. They had a baby boy named Frederick. And by season 11, um, Frazier and Lilith were divorced. And this is where the show Frazier jumps into he he left he left Boston uh, because that's where the show was was located uh, they just like um, hung out um, at a bar in Boston um, that's actually it's a real bar in Boston um, and if I'm ever there I want to go uh, but um, he had to have the bravery to move away from his son all the way to Seattle. Um, all the way to Seattle, where he actually grew up. Um, he, uh, Frazier, he actually grew up in Seattle, went to school, yada, yada, yada. Then soon found a life in Boston with um, all the other inhabitants of the bar. Him and then after the show went off the air, it was revealed that Dev Frazier has moved back out of his home home city of Seattle, Washington. Then Dom he was adjusting out of being back in his home uh back where he grew up, a few thousand miles away from his son, and getting used to To being on the radio then for him that has to have like a lot a lot of bravery dumb to move dumb all the way to a different state dumb to away from your son dumb then of Frederick was about like ooh, I want to say like four um at the beginning of Frasier and then by the end of the uh, the series, uh, we don't see him for the last, like, what, four or five seasons? I think, like, seasons, uh, four or five, uh, were the last, um, moments that we saw his son, Frederick, but, uh, towards the end of Frederick's, um, appearances on Frasier, he was about in his junior high years, so about uh, 13, 14 years old, I want to say. So it's been like well over a decade. But, but, um, he, 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 yeah, like moving out of a different state, a few thousand miles away from your son, um, And also, um, leaving a city that you have already established a life in, that you have to be brave to do that. Like, y you don't do that, like, half-assed. Like, uh, you have to have... You have to think about that a lot. Then, um... Yeah, and be brave out of, like, uh, start a new life in a new city... Yes, he grew up in Seattle, but um, he hasn't probably lived in Seattle for 25 years at least. Um, um, more and more, because in the beginning of Frasier, like, um, he was about 39 years old. And by the end of the, the uh, season one, he was around 40. So... Um, he wasn't that young, but he wasn't old either. So, yeah, I have to give Frazier a lot of bravery for doing that, uh, for moving from Boston to, um, to Seattle, then establishing a new life. And if y'all don't agree with that, um, I don't know what's the matter with you. But staying on the sit. 
Dom uh, Wheel here. Dom didn't full house, actually. Dom, Dom, it was an episode um, early um, in the show where Michelle was actually beginning uh, school. Like, uh, she was actually beginning, like, uh, I got kindergarten or preschool. Dumb. It was either one. Dumb. I haven't watched the, the original show in, um, in quite a while. So, um, uh, young Michelle was a little nervous. Then Tulsa, also Stephanie was. Duh, this happened with both Stephanie and Michelle when they were beginning uh, uh, like a kindergarten, then both girls were nervous at it. Were not nervous because they were leaving all their friends and all their friends didn't preschool Dama to be in a completely different environment, then that can be really nervous. But um, for Stephanie, she had Danny, her uncle Jesse, then Joey, and her older sister DJ to help her get used to being around a new group a little. In the words of Uncle Jesse, a whole new group of ankle biters. But, um, I love that name, I swear to God. But, um, yeah, she was, she was in a whole group, a whole new group of, again, this is the phrase that Jesse has said in the early and later years of Full House. The new group of ankle biters toward knee nibblers, um, if you will. Then, and basically, Danny, Jesse, and Joey, then DJ said that uh, she had to be brave. Then, dumb, it's gonna be okay. A few seasons later, Michelle was going through the same thing. That went full circle because since DJ was the oldest, uh, she was in like fifth grade. Like, <laughs> Um, um, because I think, like, episode three or four, uh, was, like, uh, first day of school. Then, yeah, she was a little, um, apprehensive of that being in the advanced class, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> sorry, DJ. Dor, sorry, the middle actress who did that scene. But, um, a few scenes later, it happened with Michelle. Then this time, time it was like solely for Tom Uncle Jesse. No, no, no. Uncle Jesse and Stephanie helped Michelle realize that she had to be brave to be in a new classroom. Duh, where she would make a whole bunch of new friends. She was going to have fun the, the whole year. Uh, beginning at the uh, beginning homework would suck, but that's a whole different that's a whole different story that I don't want to get into. But yeah, like legitimately in season one, uh, uh, young Stephanie was nervous about nervous was nervous about being being in, then up uh, like a kindergarten. And then a few years later, Michelle was going to do that same thing, but then she had Stephanie, who already went through it. So I'm going to help her little sister be brave. Then, again, I say be with a whole new group of ankle biters, in the words of Uncle Jesse. But, uh, yeah, like, mm. So... Getting away from the show aspect of it, uh, being brave. Uh, you have to be brave in going skydiving or bungee jumping. Holy. Those are both of those things I will never do in my life. Like, 
Yeah, like, I know I'm doing an episode about it and never give up on being brave, but I'm sorry. The fact of bungee jumping and and skydiving scares the scares the hell out of me because one bungee jumping is you jumping off of a bridge door uh, door just a really wide structure then the only thing that will save your behind is they is they thick rubber band that may or may not snap but um I, i'm not saying all this um but it basically like scare everyone then um uh, not doing it yeah you should be brave in doing in doing bungee jumping I, i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna go in to uh, excuse me uh, for the sake of argument, I will not mention what happens in the beginning of the fourth season of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Because if you've seen the first and second episodes of season four of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, then you obviously know what happened in the in those episodes <laughs> so for the sake of this episode i will not bring that up but um i will bring up uh, the moment in full house when uh when rebecca was gonna bungee jump and jesse was like nope nope no wife of mine is gonna jump off a bridge um wearing a rubber band around her ankles but, yeah, I think uh, Rebecca Donaldson was extremely brave uh, for doing that. Because that could be a little nerve-wracking, like, uh, I'm on your way down. Y you're thinking, oh, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Dom, is it going to snap? Is it not going to snap? Am I going to live? Am I actually going to wet myself on the way down out of fear? <laughs> but... Everyone has also heard that doing bungee jumping does require a little bit of bravery, and it's also like very exhilarating. Not something I would do, but um, if anyone wants to bungee jump, they have at it, my friend. But um, to also skydiving, um, that would be you jumping out of an airplane. Then you hurtling down from the sky, probably at a few hundred miles of an hour. Your body is like literally going. Um, I don't want to say a few hundred miles because I'm probably wrong. Um, just like going down like this, like this, uh, like Wiley e. Coyote. Um, in Looney Tunes, but. The only difference there is, um, uh, whenever he falls, uh, when he he does like a skydive or bungee jumping fall, um, he actually lives. <laughs> so sorry about that, but yeah, you have a you have they shoot in like a big ass backpack, and before you see ground. You basically have to yank something that will fly out of the backpack. Then you will safely float down out of the ground. Hopefully, you don't jump out late and you end up in a lake in the middle of one. So if you're really unlucky, in the middle of the Atlantic. <laughs> Oops. And that's going to give you like jaws jaws like vibes but but yeah you have to be brave than doing skydiving bungee jumping doing all that and yeah just like beginning a new school getting a new job yeah i think there's also a, a bit of bravery 
in finding love and getting married because you're talking about being with this same individual every day for the rest of your life. So there does have to be like a little bravery there. Dan, I mean, like, am I going to survive spending the next 50, 60 years with this, with this woman? I have no idea how she's going to be acting when we're old. I've seen her mother, but that's, that doesn't always happen. <laughs> like, though, dumb. But uh, yeah, there there's a certain amount of bravery in getting married. Um, I would know because I'm not wearing a ring. Hmm. Oh well. <laughs> I haven't been lucky. Which is an episode that I probably will never do. Never give up on being lucky because that doesn't make any damn sense. But yeah, there's a um, that I get to basically throw ourselves into the shows again. I'm not going live action. I'm going animation. Then tip you guys. See, I'm wearing a 90s Nickelodeon shirt. I have the Rugrats on the bottom. If I can see without like showing off on my um, horrible body. But, um... On the bottom, you see our our favorite red-headed, glasses-wearing baby. I got, I got Chucky Finster. Then, uh, Dom, in the second movie, Rugrats in Paris, Dom, Dom, for him to stop the wedding, Dom of his dad in that evil, horrid woman who I'm not even going to bother to say her name. I do know her name, but she was such a that I won't even say her name. Then, before he runs in, and you have to ask yourself, how the hell did he open the big doors? <laughs> um, to run in, because those doors were like 30 feet big, then I got him, he opened them like it was just a, like a bag of gummy worms, like holy cow, but but it's animation, it makes no sense, but I got him, he does say the words, I got to be brave, I got to be brave, and he did, Um, he ran in, he's, he, he's, he's, Stopped his dad uh, uh, from marrying the woman. Then um, he did marry somebody else and he lived um, happy, happily ever after. Then also, um, he does say his first words at the end of the movie. Which is something that did roll over then to the later um, episodes of the show. So, yeah, like, I had to jump on a, like, Be Brave Rugrats edition because that movie did show, did show bravery at the end. Uh, um, but, uh, yeah, like, he, you just really have to just, like, think about what are you actually doing if you're not brave. Then getting the thing you want done like the beginning the beginning doing videos on uh beginning doing videos on youtube uh, um the begin doing live streaming live streaming the video game and you have n no idea whether or not they're gonna like you you gotta be brave on that but yeah there's a Big list again. Um, I can basically run down, but um, that would be that would be like a nine-hour episode, and nobody wants that. But that's basically it. Like what I could basically say in a nutshell on on how to be brave. Um, without like going in 
to a whole whole spiel about it. But yeah, all I could say is when you're going through something, you just have to be brave. Then you're gonna get it done because bravery is a great thing I'd have. Um, I didn't have it years ago, but now I do, and I love it. Um, so that is gonna wrap it up for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, make sure you guys hit the like button, like a comment down. To come an example of of when you were brave. Come and also hit the subscribe button. Then make sure the notification bell is on, so you never miss a video. Then I, I will see you guys in the next episode. I love you all. Have a great day. And never give up.